Awesome. Well, I have, uh, before we get started, I uh, just want to make a quick announcement. So everybody, we have uh, Eric Sachs on. He's with a company called Breakthrough Broker. You should see their website in front of you right now. Uh, Eric's a great guy. They're doing some amazing things for agents. So um, we're, we're excited to have him on. Again, this is our 13th Luxury Lunch and Learn. We have them every uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, so every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, I don't know why you can't see me on here, not that you need to see me, but- uh, I see you. Oh, you, you can see me, all right? I got gotcha. you. All right, good. Um, so every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, this week we have, um, we have Eric right now, and then on Wednesday of this week, uh, we have our good friend Peter from Box Brownie, and then Friday, I have a gentleman that uh, you guys are going to really like. He uh, just stepped into the CEO position of the uh, of Real Estate Association during this unprecedented time. So we're going to talk to him about, you know, baptism by fire and, and adapting during uh, these difficult times. So I have a couple next week guests on as well. We are booked for the month of May, and we're already halfway booked through June. So we're going to keep this going. Uh, Breakthrough Broker, let's talk about it. Eric Sachs, thank you for your time today. Absolutely. So give everybody a little background on, on you and, and talk to me a little bit about Breakthrough Broker, if you wouldn't mind. Oh my gosh, background about from me. Uh, I think like all good realtors, we all came from a past life, right, Michael? You didn't uh, start in residence. Ne neither of us went and got a four-year degree on how to sell houses. Right. Um, my my past life was kind of fun. I chased bad guys for 13 years and uh, I was a detective for six or seven of those years. And then I, I loved teaching even back then. So I went back to the street to train rookies. And when you train rookies on night shift, they send you to burglar alarms all night long. And I was a, a police uh, officer on the training division in Fort Collins, Colorado. Sure. And um, the wind comes off the mountains at night. And if you own a million dollar home, it's like a prerequisite to leave a back door open when you go on vacation. I don't know what the deal is with that. So these really nice homes, we burglar alarms would go off. We'd go in typically no bad guy. And I'd find myself in the kitchen, checking out the granite and the backsplash. And I'd call my rookies over and be like, look at this inset sink. It's ridiculous. Look at this kitchen. So I got my real estate license as a hobby and uh, never thought I'd leave cop work. Um, but I did great as a part-time realtor. Um, I m made enough money to equal or surpass my police uh, income and left cop work, opened a real estate company with my best friend, and uh, the rest is kind of history. We grew that to a little over 100 agents. Uh, we were acquired by a large national franchise in 2010 who wanted us to manage thousands of realtors in multiple states, and that didn't sound great to us, so we said no. And, um, and uh, signed it on compete, couldn't sell real estate in, in Colorado for five years. So we're like, what are we going to do? And we were, we were, we were listening to Pandora radio and I was looking up stuff on WebMD uh, because as an ex cop and an ex hockey player, everything hurts me. And, um, uh, and we're free radio, free resources on the, on the internet. And we thought that's it. Free stuff for realtors. We had no idea how we'd make money off it, but we knew we wanted to provide for the real estate industry content and ideas and strategies and tips and technologies uh, that typically you may have to pay for and we wanted to deliver it for free. So Breakthrough Broker is now the most used interactive resource for realtors in North America with 422,000 realtors using it Man. and uh, no catch. Everything on there is no cost and we make our money on advertising based platform as well as uh, software as a service. We sell our marketing uh, technologies to brokerages throughout the country. Breakthrough broker, um, you know, you, we did a training for you guys several months back, but I was uh, first introduced to you through our uh, title company. Again, for those who don't know, practice real estate as an agent here in the States, but I also run the Lux designation and a consulting company. So our, our title company said, Hey, you got to check out this, this, uh, this tool and this resource. And then, then that's how, um, you know, we kind of circle back, but you and I were, I was actually at your birthday party at, uh, yeah. at, at out in Vegas at in Vegas, last yeah. July. Yeah. And, um, this is before all of that. And, um, but I, you know, seen you at events and stuff, but I didn't put two and two together. So, uh, great story. So you, you, you were, um, you know, different profession, part-time real estate agent, very successful. And that's kind of was my story as well. I was a full-time high school teacher, part-time agent. And, um, 
Um, so that, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, tell me about the adrenaline rush on a side note. What kind of adrenaline rush uh, you'd have going checking out some of these properties where the alarms were going off? I mean, you had to, you had to be prepared oh, it, every time, know, right? Was, uh, yeah, I mean, police work was a, was a, it was a calling. I loved what I did. I still talk to the guys and gals I worked with over there. And um, it was a great 13 years of my life. And I actually think it, 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 it prepared me to be a great realtor and a good leader. Uh, it, it enabled me to learn how to talk to anybody in any situation. And so uh, I know now dozens of police officers and people from law enforcement who've gotten into real estate. And literally, I think they're all top producers. And so, and I think it's the same coming from teaching and, and uh, other professions. So it's been, it, it was, a, it, people are like, whoa, what a crazy transition. And it's actually hasn't been. So it's been um, good for me, fun uh, for my family. And it's it, it, uh, now that we're out of real estate. So we can't sell anymore because Breakthrough Broker takes advertising dollars from the title and mortgage industry. So we were forced to put our licenses uh, relinquish our licenses for RESPA in order to um, have an advertising platform for that in those two industries. So, uh, but my wife sells still full-time. Nathan's wife sells full-time. She's, she, they're both um, in the real estate world here in Colorado. So it's been, we're, we're close in it still. That's great. That's great. Uh, so before we go into some of the questions, we have some um, similar type questions we ask a lot of different guests and and again for those of you who are watching I uh, you know Eric I have I have people that watch this live stream that you know are connected with me that aren't in real estate I have awesome. you know, financial advisors I have people from different countries watching we have a lot of people chiming in it's, it's been pretty cool um, just a couple housekeeping items so first off for those of you that um, have missed episodes we replay all of our our live streams um, on, in our Facebook group. It's a totally free group. It's called Luxury Listing um, Specialist, but it's uh, if you type in Luxury Listing Specialist, like you see on the screen, this group will pop up. Our replays are there. Um, and then a couple other things um, that I wanted to remind everybody about. If you share this live stream or you type in a comment, um, if, again, hopefully you're getting some good, good value from this, but if you are, uh, we are giving, uh, my good friend Brad Inman, we're going to be giving away um, three tickets over the next three weeks uh, to the first ever all live digital Inman Connect. It's a great <laughs> event. Uh, Eric and I, uh, you know, at his birthday party was at the Inman Connect in Vegas. So, you know, these are events that I go to. I go to three events a year through these guys. They do some amazing things. And we're going to be giving away three uh, tickets. Uh, to this event, uh, June 2nd through the 4th, all you got to do is uh, ask Eric or myself a question or uh, share uh, this live stream um, to your page. And uh, that's the that, that's kind of the incentive to help get uh, some more people in there. So <clears throat> talk to me a little bit about uh, getting back to you now, Eric. Um, talk to me a little bit about, uh, you talked about free resources for agents. You know, I tell agents all the time, the most powerful word in marketing is free, right? So, you know, you could put some, uh, some stuff by your curb and write a free sign next to it and it'll be gone before dinner time. So you, you know, and I'm not saying real estate agents are cheap, but real estate agents are known to like free things. Let me put it to you this way and talk to me about some of the, 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 the free tools and resources that Breakthrough Broker offers real estate agents? Because we have a lot of agents on here that might not be luxury specialists, but they want to, they want to increase yeah. their average sale price, but maybe they don't have our designation or they're not with a well-known brand and, and that's okay. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, some of the resources that, um, that you guys offer. Yeah, it's pretty in depth. We have about 95% of what you need for your business. And even if you are luxury and you work at a, a firm that has an amazing marketing department, we speak with luxury specialists all over the country who, who piggyback some of what we create on Breakthrough Broker because it's stuff they can't find anywhere else. So we, we have a full content team. It's everything from flyers, postcards, brochures, and we do have some luxury flyers. We have luxury postcards, which can be made the same day you load a listing to the MLS. 
Hmm. And up, and you can either, per, we have a prospecting tool where you can draw a circle around a neighborhood and or upload a list that you've bought from other prospecting resources. And we'll print stamp, label, and mail. And one of the things about our, pro, and the printing and postage isn't free. Everything else is free. Sure. You can download that for free and go to a local print shop and do it yourself. Okay. What we have on, on the platform is same day same day postage, meaning if you order before one o'clock central, two o'clock Eastern, um, it's printed and in the mail same day. There aren't many, there aren't many products in the industry that do that. Uh, everything else is, you know, you can create a, a luxury brochure, download it, bring it to a local print shop. You can create open house flyers. One of the things that we were finding was even our realtors were, were you know, what happens is, is you need something right now. If you wake up at nine in the morning, you have a 10 a.m. open house and you forget to get some sort of marketing ready for it. Uh, a lot of times, and I'm not, I don't, mostly luxury specialists don't do this, but come on, you guys have woken up, you don't have marketing and you just print out the MLS sheets, bring them to your listing, and you stick them there. Mm -hmm. And um, now you can create a flyer in about two minutes, print them at home, no cost, run off to your open house. And then other things that you may not have thought of, like we have an open house, uh, comparison chart. Now that we're virtual open housing, we have a virtual open house comparison chart. So if you're a realtor and you want to post on your Facebook page for all my friends and family, virtual open housing this weekend, message me, I can get you this organizational tool to keep it all in one place. We have some stuff in there. Um, we have consumer facing infographics that are, uh, that are designed for you to create. We're selling our home proudly listed by Eric Sachs. The idea is to download that, send it to your seller, whether it's a, a, a $500,000 listing or a $2 million listing, have your seller post, especially if it's a $2 million listing. For most in the luxury world, your sellers and buyers have huge sphere of influences, right? right. Very influential sphere of influences. So if you can have your seller post, we're selling our home, with an image of their home and it says proudly listed by Eric Sachs on it, what are we doing? We're marketing to our seller sphere of influence for free. Well, right? you bring up a good point there. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm a big believer, especially with the high end and luxury, is having homeowners be part of the, the sales team, right? Right. Indirectly, because I tell agents and I tell owners, listen, you never know somebody who knows somebody. So, right. You know, especially with luxury many times there's not a sign in the yard and they want confidentiality but let's be real once it goes on the, the multiple listing service the MLS yeah. and realtor.com and all these other third-party syndicated websites everybody knows your home's going to be on the market of by course. 1 p.m. anyways of course so you might as well you know get some collateral out there so agents yeah. can put together on your platform, some amazing, not just the MLS sheets, like you said, but some amazing flyers and brochures, print them in-house or, or you guys print them. And then they can send out both either digital versions of those or printed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we have, and we have specific social posts. So Facebook okay. posts, Instagram posts uh, that are sized correctly for Facebook and Instagram uh, and all that's no cost. So Facebook, Instagram, regular flyers, digital flyers, um, 20 reasons to hire me to sell your home infographic. It's super cute. It's nice. It's fun. It's, it, it'd be great for something to post on your, on your website or in your LinkedIn profile, or there's just, there's so many things within there that we've created to help promote yourself to your sphere of influence, to, to digital leads that come in. And all that stuff's free. So it, it, there's a lot. There's over a thousand pieces of content on the site. And so the idea is that sometimes it feels a little overwhelming. So we have a search tool on there. And we get when you are a profile holder on Break to Broker, you get two emails a week. Every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Central, you get an email from us. No one wants more emails in this world right now. But if it can be an email where you can find something for free that can transform your business, we have one of the highest open rates in the industry and the whole idea is, is for us to just support the industry, support everyone from mega producer to multi-million dollar producers to luxury real estate agents to rookies to agents at big brands to little brands. Mm -hmm. um, so we so just you bring up a good point. We, we so crank out new content every day. 
I mean, you, you, your, your ideal client doesn't matter if they're with the franchise or independent because, you know, many of these big franchises, they, they provide similar type tools or flyers and that kind of stuff. But, but yours are unique. They're custom, the, the speed at which you get things back. Mm -hmm. And then you have content too, right? You have tips, yeah. you have webinars, expert, you know, we did a webinar yeah. for you, yeah. but you guys have, uh, you know, Oh my gosh, outside. we have business plans and marketing plans. So we have, yeah. if you have a big team, and you want a new agent guidebook or a buyer presentation or a, or a listing presentation or I mean literally anything you need we have on the site. We, uh -huh. we have a full staff of content staff. We get about 100 to 200 submissions in a week from our 421,000 users of what they would like to see. So we sift through all of that and we really, you know, it's really built for realtors by realtors. So we really are building stuff now everything we build is a, is a suggestion from within the industry. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. So you guys are adapting quickly. People are giving you some ideas, some suggestions. Hey, Eric Absolutely. and team, um, do you guys have X and Y? I, we, yes, we do. It's found here. Or we don't have X and Y. But you know what? Uh, you're the second person that asked us about it. We're gonna we're gonna go find X and Y if it be something exactly. That we can help you with. Or build it. Or build it. Yeah. Build it. Yeah. Um, well, good. Well, let's get into some questions. And again, if any of our uh, people watching th through the live stream, if you have any questions whatsoever, please type them in. Um, those of you that, uh, you know, type them in and we'll get them answered. Again, Eric, uh, myself, uh, if, we, if you're watching a replay of this, uh, you can always send me an email, michael at marketinglecturegroup.com, michael at marketinglecturegroup, and we'll get you the answer. If I can't answer it, we'll ask Eric. Um, so before I open it up for um, some q and in a few minutes, I want to answer, uh, ask you a few questions. So we're talking about, uh, you know, six months ago, three months ago, one of the key buzzwords that I've heard over the last year is, is disruptor, disruptor, disruptor. Well, over the last six weeks, pivot, pivot, pivot is, is the, the buzzword, right? Like how are real estate agents, how are companies, how are XYZ, how are teachers, how's education, how are people pivoting during this, this un, you know, unprecedented time? So talk to me a little bit about how, how your company, you know, that pr provides tools and resources for agents, you know, what pivoting have you had to do? Um, because it might, um, you know, might be enlightening to somebody watching like, um, that either just affirms that they're on the right track or, hey, maybe right. maybe there's something we can learn from Eric and his team. You know, it's interesting, and not just our company, but I think in general, over the last eight years in many markets of America, the real estate has been really good. Would you agree? Yeah. And over the last- Unfortunately, not, not in Chicago, but we're going- <laughs> over, over, For the most part, um, most yeah. markets in the country have really yeah. good market. And real estate- relatively to to the past and the current present was easy in in one aspect and so not e it's hard to build your business it's hard to go out and get your your clients buyers and sellers but real estate was different in in the last eight years and with this crisis we've really had to go back to being more gritty We've had to go back to working harder than we've ever had to work before. As I'm interviewing, doing the same thing you're doing with some of the top realtors in the world, these, these realtors have 10 assistants, right? But they are pounding the phones. They're making more phone calls than ever. They, I asked, I've asked eight, we did eight interviews with some of the top realtors in the world. The legends. Asked, uh, the legends. I asked all eight, what, what tool have you leveraged? What technology have you leveraged to, um, to get through this? Because they have a lot to lose, right? And I thought I was going to hear some crazy tech, CRM stuff, email stuff, tech, and every single one of them picked up their phone and said, I'm just making more phone calls than ever. And so same thing with Breakthrough Broker. We just picked up our phone. We started doing more webinars. I feel that visibility right now for everyone in the industry 
I'm a big momentum. You, you and I are big sports fans, right? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. momentum is one of the biggest aspects of winning a particular sporting event, right? The team with the most momentum at the end of the game typically wins. And I think business is the same. I think your momentum in your business is, is almost everything, right? And we got stopped. We got hit like by a Mack truck, right? So momentum was good. For eight years, momentum was good. And then coming into 2020, momentum was really good. And um, I think a lot of us are a little dazed and confused. We, we, that momentum came to a screeching halt. And most of us had never, if you got into this business within eight years, we'd never felt that before. And um, I think it's been a struggle to get that momentum and, and every action we take today is the success we see in through in, in August, right? So same thing at Break Your Broker, we're picking up the phones, we're calling our clients, our, our paid clients, our advertisers, we're calling our realtors, we're, we're taking every phone call, we're doing every, every interview we're asked to do. And typically, we're, we, we, um, it's not that we're picky, but we tra I traveled 47 weeks last year, that's where I saw you most, was on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm not traveling right now and I'm all about hopping on brokerage webinars. And, and I think we've had to get back to a grit in the industry. And I also think for us, not excluded, we have to be better than we ever were. We have to have better dialogue, more remarkable content for our users. Realtors have to have more remarkable dialogue and conversations to get their buyers and sellers back into the market after uh -huh. maybe they went to the sidelines. So. I think in general, we've got to dig in a little deeper than we may have ever had to do. Well, I, I don't want to um, thank you for that. Some really valuable nuggets there. So I want to, I want to uh, recap some of the things you talked about because I don't want to take them too lightly. So you guys have interviewed, you know, some of, we, I think it was called the legend series, these yeah. legend real estate agents. I mean, you know, many of them are making seven figures a year and, and they're just doing some amazing things. They have tons of clients and past clients. And you're, you, you were asking them, what, what are you doing to adapt? Is there something? And there weren't earth shattering technology, CRMs, mm -hmm. Facebook, you know, no it was picking up the phone, right. And, yep. and communicating and being sincere and being in the moment. Yeah. And, um, you know some really some really good insight there for uh, anyone that's that's watching. Um, it, it, it's fundamentals, right? To use a sports Absolutely. analogy, you know, you're a Bronco guy, I'm a Bear guy, and um, you still owe me lunch, by the way, my Bear. I do owe you lunch. Around that last second Next field time goal. I see you, we got a nice lunch. The last second field goal. The uh, heartbreaker, buddy. Oh my goodness, that was the highlight of our year, week Jeez. two, and we went down from there. But no, but it's, so. I like, you know, I'm a former football guy, so we talk about fundamentals and in football it's blocking and tackling. And most, you know, most football players, it's not fun. You know, on basketball, it's it's the ball handling and, and, and the passing and, and getting your shots in sometimes. And and those aren't necessarily the things that enjoy the athletes mm -hmm. enjoy. Of course. But but it's it's essential to be successful. So the the blocking and and fundamentals for our business as in the real estate business is of course taking care of your current and past clients and that's yeah. huge i mean that's that's number one you know at some people it's going to be prospecting and lead generation and breakthrough broker offers that, that just listed postcards yeah. just sold the circle prospecting uh if you want to farm particular neighborhoods that sort of thing and um you know i think more so now than ever um you have to be very empathetic. I had John Cheplak on on Friday and he talked about empathy, right? Being, being um, very sensitive to where right. your clients are, being in the moment. Uh, I think that's a, that's a great uh, skill and it's not learned for some people. Um, certain personality types have more difficulty at it than others. But the other aspect of it is, is being honest and, and, and always being honest, but being direct with them based on what their motivation mm -hmm. and their why is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they're why, in other words, they have to, they're selling because, you know, they're downsizing, it's too much house. Um, and, you know, the, the payments or the taxes are too much or whatever, maybe it's a widow. Uh, and, and, and so whatever the issues, like I have a, a, a right now I have properties that we're marketing and, 
and you got to know your numbers. You got to know your numbers. That's why I like Breakthrough Broker is they get experts in from different markets. You not only have to know your current market, Eric, right? But having different perspectives, different, uh, uh, different markets um, and being uh, connected with agents, right? Whether Absolutely. it be feeder markets or just you know my, migration markets, it doesn't really matter, but you get different perspectives so that when you do get uh, a showing, you know that they've been probably vetted or a more serious buyer than they would have been six months ago because mm -hmm. they don't want to expose themselves potentially to COVID-19. Of course. Here in Illinois, there's additional disclosures the buyer and the agents have to fill of out. Course. You know, masks, gloves, all that. So, so although showings might be fewer in between, the quality of showings and the number of showings we are seeing thus far to, to actual offers is, is much higher than it was pre-COVID. Right. So really good, uh, good point there. In your words, uh, in, in your opinion, uh, the brokers and the agents, uh, once the, the shelter in place and things are laxed a little bit, uh, and by the way, I was reading online today about a, a, um, a restaurant in the Denver. Castle Rock, Colorado. Yeah, it's been a big, big to do here. Yeah, right. Yesterday morning, right? They opened it yeah. up and there were lines up. The, so um, but when things do loosen up, in your opinion, based on your breakthrough series and your rock star, uh, you know, legends of the game and just what you see, in your opinion, fill in this blank, uh, the agents and the brokerages um, that will be most successful are, and, and will thrive um, post COVID-19 are those that have blank in common. They kept the momentum right now. Momentum. Someone asked me, someone asked me in an interview recently, they said, what in August, what can you do to make sure you have homes to buy or sell? And I said, there's nothing you can do in August to get a client in August. You found your clients for August, September, and October right now by making calls in March, April, and May. So if you're watching it and you haven't started that yet, the work you're doing right now are the closings you see in August, September, October, November. And, you know, in a very small way, and I don't want to tell stories, but, you know, my second year out of cop work, you know, I got, I left cop work and I did real estate and it was awesome. I was my own boss and I was, I loved it. Right. So my second year that didn't have that, you didn't have that super. I didn't have, I didn't have this. Yeah. And yeah. so like the second year I was like, this is great. It's November. I'm going to chill out for a little bit. And I kind of pulled, pulled my foot off the gas pedal and moseyed into Thanksgiving. And I parlayed that into Christmas and I took that into New Year's. And last, next thing you know, I didn't work from November 5th to January 15th. And, I, and, the, and then I was complaining to my mortgage and title partners in March that the market sucked, right? And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Things are great. And I really looked back and I'm like, oh my gosh. I, the years before that, I had the pedal to the metal. I was doing pop buys and parties for my past clients and sending out messages and making phone calls and doing my business plan and my marketing plan and just killing it through November, December. And that particular year, I learned my lesson and it's, it's very similar right now. And what I'm, what, it's also super easy in a world of fear and anxiety and confusion of what's going on right. to, to literally like do the, take the path of least resistance, right? So instead of sitting down and buckling down and figuring out how the email marketing platform and your CRM works, when it would take like three videos and a call to support, you're going to go and work on the lawn, right? That's just human nature. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if pivoting your marketing action plan, because I do think there needs to be a pivot. If open houses were in your marketing plan for 2020, right? Um, you I don't think we're going to see in-person open houses. Maybe not this year, maybe at very minimum, not this summer. Right. Um, our, the governor in Colorado has already said no open houses till September and then I'll make a decision. So if that was in your marketing plan, there needs to be a pivot. Like, what am I going to do? And I think you're just going to rewrite, how am I going to do virtual open houses? How am I going to market them? How am I going to lead convert them? How am I going to drive leads? How am I going to drive business? What are viewers, whatever it may be, but you have to redo a few things. The new norm and it's a cliche right now is really new. Like we're going to do business differently. So 
that's a you know that's a real good analogy two good analogies there one don't wait till august put in the work now i mean to use sports analogies right like you know you, you start lifting that's why new year's resolutions many people join that gym and then they drop out because they don't see the results immediately but you have to put in the work it takes months sometimes it takes years depending on your right. industry and um that's that's a very valid point there so you use the word momentum and and I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, body in motion stays in motion, right? So you have to right. keep the momentum going. And we are in a show and tell industry. I always tell this story about show and tell with my one son. You know, he, he brought he didn't bring Tito's to, um, to to school, but he did bring a copper mug once. Um, and uh, I got to show you this this image, Eric. You'll get a kick out of this. He brought a copper mug once to uh, uh, to to show and tell, and my wife was trying to figure out what the heck are you doing? And um, long story short, he was supposed to bring something with the letter M to school that day. Well, he brought uh, several items, but he one of the things he brought was my, Ma, my Tito's Moscow Mule Mug. He brought, nothing was in it, not, no Tito's or anything, but luckily his teacher had a good sense of humor, but we are in a show and tell industry. And so the other thing I might add to that, Eric, is one of the ways you cr create momentum and keep up momentum mm -hmm. is if you have a success story and you're working with an active client and you put one under contract or you just listed a home or you helped a buyer find their place or you had a, um, you know, I just, we just had a closing um, not too long ago with Carmen, right? You know, Carmen, who's my title rep mm -hmm. here. And it was a, a pretty much a digital closing, right? So the buyer and the, and, and the sellers, they didn't go to the closing, you know, through. And so it was a, it was a great experience. But my point is you're going to have consumers out there that might not realize Ooh. that, hey, things are still selling. Things are still listing. Closings are still occurring. So don't keep it a secret. You got to be sensitive out there, right? You can't be out there in people's faces and bragging. But if you have a success, tell the story of how you were able to get the success and how you adapted during COVID-19. Agree. So good. Uh, talk to me about 2008 compared to today. Uh, you know, I know you weren't a breakthrough broker wasn't around then, but based on your experience um, and experiences from talking to these legends, what are you hearing people say what's different today than I hate to use, you know, I'm doing Back quotes, then. the downturn, 2000. I mean, two, two things. Number one, we did great in the downturn. We just worked really hard and didn't pay much attention to it. Um, we, we were, that was our norm, right? That was our norm. We just had to work really hard to get closings and find clients. And we survived fine through 2008 and nine, seven, eight, nine. But um, I think the difference is pretty easy to see that the 2008 downturn was caused by this industry. It was an ec true economic downturn. And what we're seeing now was caused by a health pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I do believe, and really nobody knows, not even the experts know what's going to be like in August, September, October. But I do know that I talk to our advertisers on the title side of the business and uh, I, they're starting to see. So for example, in one of our markets, they do about 300, uh, they do about 300 open orders a week, Okay. a week. And they were averaging about 15 to 20 a week huh. in, in April, in April. And five percent of, of what they're yeah, and now they're back up to 127. Okay. And um, I I do think you'll there'll be there will be some people that can't buy that we're going to buy. Um, I think there will be some people that'll get. I think your gold is in your sphere of influence. There will be people that you know that want to get into investment because they got kicked their they got their butt kicked in the market. And they want to get into real estate instead. Some people will have to sell. Some people will want to downsize. Uh, and so I believe we'll be okay. I don't think it'll be as a strong of a, as it was moving in, but my, my, my bet is that we'll, we'll get back at this here in a little bit. I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, when at home, what, what are you doing? Um, uh, how are you adapting? What best practice would you have for anybody? We call it our win at home series. 
for those agents, those team leaders, or you know wh whoever's mm -hmm. watching this stream that isn't used to uh, dealing with e-learning, or maybe both the husband and yeah. wife are working from home and they only have one office, or they don't have an office and that they need to. <laughs> I mean, what 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 recommendation? I'll, I'll be honest, it was very hard for me. I'm either on the road or at the office. And if you can't tell, we're back at the office. Our stay-at-home order is over. Here, we're at 50% capacity in the office starting today. So we're all happy to be here. Working at home was super hard for me. So I ended up, uh, so I literally woke up, took a shower every day, um, which sounds funny, and found There's a, a dedicated, people, yeah. dedicated place to work and uh, away from the kitchen. Because the first three weeks I was in the kitchen, I was eating. I must have gained like 10 pounds. I was on every phone call, I was in the cupboard looking for something to snack on or in the fridge sure, and I was sure. on the phone. And so I, I got away from the kitchen uh, and I, I, I ended my day. I typically work a lot um, at night anyway, even when I'm traveling or working, but I made sure there was a definitive end to the day by taking the dogs for a walk or I was having trouble because if I either had to fly home or I, my office is, uh, you know, on a good traffic day in Denver, 45 minutes from home. So um, I had this definitive break of the day. That was hard for me. But but we continued our work. Our team stayed very motivated. We had a lot of, I have a lot of accountability. So whether I'm home or on the road or at the office, I have accountability with my business partner and all the people we work with. So uh, my my, I would say find accountability find a designated space to work that doesn't have a ton of distractions and find a definitive break to your day. Do something at the end of the day, walk the dogs, go for a jog, do something that tells your brain the day's over. That's good. So, so having some type of structure, of course, it sounds like you're saying, um, but yep. you know, I, I'm, I'm used to coming to the office as well. I do a lot of travel and uh, yeah, that's, there's definitely, um, uh, some learning learning curve there. Of course. Um, you know, if you had an agent that you were friends with or your wife's in real estate and you were to move to a new market, new area, I just released my 90th podcast on Thursday and it was with a gal that moved from the East Coast to the West Coast and she's been in the um, San Francisco area for you know only a couple of years and she made the, the change uh, from going from one market to a new with not too many connections. What would be the one or two, maybe three things that you'd recommend to an agent uh, looking to establish themselves as a rock star if, if, if you and your wife moved somewhere and she hung her license in a new area or a new state? Yeah. Uh, what com comes to mind? Anything? Well, I would do open houses. I have always found it very easy to get buyer leads at open houses. My wife was crushing open house leads. She, she was in property management for eight years. And recently, this year, it got back into residential real estate. And um, so she just did great at open houses. Uh, open house, especially, so if you're in a market where you don't know anybody, open houses is really good. Uh, number two, I would say um, find, find a niche. So for Joanna, it's, she speaks Spanish. So she's from Costa Rica. So she would purely market to that Spanish speaking niche if we moved. And uh, third, you know, it's funny. We join as realtors, we join all these groups that are realtor groups. We join Facebook groups that are realtor groups and we go to board, you know, board of realtor meetings. And if I moved, I would join a lot of groups that had nothing to do with real estate, both Facebook and personal, you know, and just uh, meet people in specialized groups, whether it's a biking group or I play hockey. So I would join a men's league and meet a bunch of people, you know, at hockey two nights, two, three nights a week. Um, and so, you know, I've always wanted to do a show <laughs> where I take five top, you know, like big brother, like a, like a, like a, like a, reality show like the okay. bachelor where sure. you where you plunk like five top producers in a in a market that they've never been in and see who who sells the most uh yeah i love it I like love a tough it. market like you take five top producers and stick them in like i don't know iowa <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. and see who can really sell and that's would be super interesting
That would be interesting because I have a lot of friends on, on both coast and, you know, the price points are higher and, and, um, Oh, I'd love to stick someone in like, literally, like you take, you take these, these realtors you see on Bravo and stuff yeah. like that. And you stick them in Des Moines, Iowa and say, you got six weeks who can sell the most real right. estate. <laughs> you, you stick them in some of the Chicagoland suburbs. I sold yeah. this house this year for over $2 million and there were seven years of inventory in yeah. Barrington Hills, Illinois, above 2 yeah. million bucks, seven years. That's so, crazy. Uh, you know, you want to be creative. You want to be outside the box. It's one yep. thing initially, but you know, many agents lose momentum with time. Of course. And, you got to continue to be aggressive. So that's a, of course. that's a great, great uh, idea. There was somebody that spoke actually at the, the conference last year uh, at the Beverly Hills Luxury Conference uh, that Brad and that t his team put on. And he had talked about, they had someone on from New York, they had from Chicago, mm -hmm. and then they had somebody from Beverly Hills. And this agent only been licensed for 10 years, but he goes, I've never sold a home to a client where the client didn't make money. In other words, home, their, their homes appreciated in value. Mm -hmm. And they, the two other panelists were like, oh man, this guy's young. You, you don't know how lucky you have right. it because most don't, you know, don't have uh, those markets. Most, right. most markets aren't that good. So, right. um, well, good. Any, anything, uh, anything else you would like to add, Eric? No, this is great. I love that you're doing this. Thank you for, for, doing so much content for the community and having the people listen to various viewpoints. I think it's fantastic. And I think this is a new norm. A lot of, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great minds and talent in this industry have decided to, to uh, get highly visible like you. And so you're, I'm watching all the people you're having. For those of you who are going to watch Peter, we call him Pita from Australia. Uh, next, whenever you have him yeah, on, he's Wednesday, two days. fantastic. One of the best, funniest guys I know in the whole industry. So tune in for PETA and yeah. um, tell them I say hi. I and um, otherwise, uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, no, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, yeah, our next four guests are up on the screen. We have Peter on Wednesday. Again, same time, same place. You can go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. Excuse me. Go to luxurylunchandlearn.com to sign up. Luxury Lunch and Learn, or we'll be streaming it right on the page that you're watching if you are watching it live. Uh, as I mentioned, Jeff Lasky's Friday. I've David from Keeping Current Matters. They, they provide some great content for real estate agents. And then next Wednesday, I have David Osborne on. He runs uh, Keller Williams um, uh, region, if you will. Great guy. Um, so that's that's next week. And we just got Stefan Swanpool and some others lined up. Awesome. So we're really uh, excited about that. I'm wearing some Lux gear for those of you that keep asking me that's the website i referenced before luxury specials gear i'm going to check real quick if there's any uh, questions on facebook and then i'll let you go if there isn't thanks my man so let me see here we have uh we'll just have a couple shout outs uh, so you know ryan bocros uh B -O yep. yeah probably of course ryan hopefully i'm not butchering your name ryan said love breakthrough broker uh got nikia brooks watching nikia's uh He's pretty tight with uh, Explode, Matt Fagioli. They run a yep. big brokerage there in Atlanta. And um, I got Harry on. Harry is, uh, I think Harry, I believe Harry's from Costa Rica. Um, momentum to fill your pipeline is great advice. Does Eric think that there will be more properties purchased sight unseen with those virtual showings and open houses? He's Cabo. He's KW Cabo. You know, that's a great question. And I mean... I'm just going to put myself in that situation. And I do think properties will go under contract sight unseen, but I do not think they'll sell sight unseen more than ever before. I think you'll see some clauses which are dangerous for the seller um, of, you know, we, we need to actually see the property. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it, especially the higher you go in price range, it's, I wouldn't. So I, I think it'd be really hard to litter, to close sight unseen. I think you'll see maybe a little more, I think you'll see a ton of showings sight unseen, but when you go under contract, I think this buyer is really going to want to see it. And Michael, you tell me, I mean, how many people in your price range are going to buy? And, and maybe where you are in Cabo and I sold real estate in Costa Rica. I had a, I had a company there. Uh, and so maybe some more on those vacation markets, quite possibly, yeah. but, but not traditionally here in the States. I don't think you'd see a ton of that. I think you'll see more, but I don't think it's going to become a norm. 
Well, that's a good good point. Just so, my two cents. Well, no, that's a great great perspective. I was talking to a gentleman that runs a, uh, another um, designation uh, this morning, and he was he was doing it. He's doing a training for leading real estate companies of the world, and different states um, have different disclosures. But he's he, he talked about how some agents are offering like a a buy with me and or, or companies. If you don't like the home in 30 days, we'll buy it back at the same price you purchased it. But like you said, that gets really dangerous. Yeah, I mean, you know, how many of those can you do before I know, you get sued? I know, <laughs> seriously. So, uh, do your due diligence. But I think at the end of the game, at the end of the day, having amazing photos and descriptions and virtual tours. I know if you have a virtual tour, yeah, or super video, important. You know, you're going to get more views and more clicks and uh, probably more showings and offers. So, uh, great question, Harry. Any others? Last, last. Um, no others. I'm not seeing any others. So Eric, Thanks, thank my you so friend. much for your time. It's Keep great to see you. I wish it was in day. person. We'll do a beer next time I see you. Yeah, I owe yeah. you lunch. All right. All right. Sounds good, man. See you, buddy. I'll talk to you. Thanks, all right. everybody. Peace. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Monday. Make it a great week, and we'll talk soon. Bye.